sugar, one of the world's oldest commodities. The first domestication of sugar, when the people of Papua New Guinea chewed it raw, date back to 8,000 BCE. As the trade of sugar spread around the world, the processing and harvesting of it also circulated. Today, one of the biggest sugar-producing regions on the planet lies here in South Florida, in a lush agricultural region known as Muck City. I consider Big Sugar a, a blessing. They employ a lot of people. They're good for the soil. They're just good. Bellglade, Pahokee, and Clewiston, Florida form the hub of the Glades sugar producing region, which is the largest in the US, with more than 15 million tons of sugar flowing from these fields each year. I actually have a lot to thank that industry for. I'm a first generation American. Both my parents are from Jamaica. My dad was one of those migrant workers who traveled back and forth from Jamaica, who before they had these harvester machines, used to cut the cane manually with cane knives. And so it got my family to America. But there's one aspect of the sugar business here that's not so sweet. Before harvesting, farmers typically set their fields ablaze, which reduces the cost of shipping and processing, a practice that started a heated debate. And this has been ongoing. Their burning practices have changed. I remember as a kid, they used to light the sugar cane on one side of the field and let it burn across. And it generated more debris and more smoke. Now what they do is they go around and burn the perimeter of the field and it burns in and goes straight up, which then incinerates more of the vegetation. So you get a cleaner burn. So what's the story and the reason why they burn the sugar cane either to make it sweeter or the machine can get in there easier? I don't know, but for years, it's caused a lot of respiratory problems for a lot of people. The cane fields, are a blessing to many, they're a curse to others. In South Florida, the agricultural business, especially the sugar business, is extremely vital to the economy. We know when they go burn the sugar cane, they see the sugar cane burning, oh, that's income. It's a good thing because it basically contributes to the economy. Yes, it's no, sugar cane. Exactly. We're going to work on the sugar mill again, that's the money. Yeah. The Glades region of Palm Beach County is where 75% of sugar in Florida is grown. In every harvest season, nearly a half million acres of sugar cane are burnt, a pre-harvest ritual that has been practiced for decades and even generations. A controlled fire line is ignited across the sugar cane field. 25% of the plant stock is burned including the tops, straw, and the green and dry leaves, all of which are referred to as trash. The fire just burns away the leaves, and it leaves the stem and the stalk, which they harvest mechanically, cut it up in little pieces, take it to the mill, they put it through rollers, which squeezes the juice, and basically they just get thousands of gallons of cane juice, heat it, and the water evaporates, and the sugar crystallizes, and you kind of go from there. The burn season typically begins late October, early November. And it's 460,000 plus acres of sugar cane. So it takes them a while to burn and harvest all those cane fields. This is indicative to the glaze area. When you ride through the glaze on uh, the highway or just the street, back in the horizon, bushes and trees way back in the back, and you're going to see a cane perch burning somewhere. There are benefits to burning. The burn kills microorganisms and eliminates the trash, both of which contribute to the richness of the dark soil, known as the muck. This black ash is largely potash, and it's a very important part of fruits and vegetables. It is the source of fertilizer, but it goes into the atmosphere, and wherever the wind is blowing, eventually it falls. One of the things about the harvest season here in the sugarcane country is they burn every day, Monday through Sunday, so there's no days off. So black snow during uh, burn season here in the muck is as snow is in Antarctica. It's crazy because they're like these nice sized particle pieces that are just slowly falling down on your persons, on your property. 
It's not like it's a long period of time, but when it does happen, it's very prevalent. It could be as long as an inch or two long, and it gets on your clothes. When the black smoke rises from the burning sugar cane, it releases a myriad of hazardous compounds, including formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, and ammonia, which can result in respiratory distress, causing concerns from the communities to grow and raising a debate to adjust or change these ongoing burning practices. We get this black ash that falls down in pieces, and since we don't get regular snow, that's what we call pahokee snow. You can see it on either side of the road. You can feel it because elements of the suit will actually permeate to your car. You kind of feel in your clothes a little bit. It has a major effect on anybody who comes in contact with the muck. They've been dropping that ash on me personally for 53 years. I don't think it's healthy, to be honest with you. I can cut, I breathe in ash for 53 years and something not be wrong with you. Come on, man. If it get in my shirt right now, I can't get it out. So what if it getting in my lungs? See what I'm saying? For, for, for 50 years. You talking 50 years, they, they burning. Ever since I was a little boy, they been burning it. Steve Messam is a local activist trying to convince the sugar companies to transition from burning the sugar cane into green harvesting. I'm actually a part of a campaign that's called Stop the Burn, Go Green. It's a very educational campaign about this green harvest approach that can help from an economic standpoint. People are having all of these health issues and something has to give. In Messam's eyes, the glades bear the brunt of the cane burning, while the wealthier communities on the other end of Palm Beach County are spared the smoke and black snow. Whenever the wind is blowing east to our more affluential neighbors, they actually give them a courtesy and they don't burn. But when it's blowing west towards us here in the muck, they burn away. What about us? We literally have homes, high schools that are in cane fields and they burn away. And our kids have to deal with it. Our residents has to deal with it. That's just something that I think is just ridiculous. The burn permits are based on the direction of the wind and how strong and that kind of thing. Put this in perspective, during the harvesting season, every morning during the season when uh, growers apply for permits, if the wind would be projected to carry that smoke and ash towards the more affluent communities of Eastern Palm Beach County, then a permit would be denied that day. However, when the winds would carry the smoke and ash towards the Glades communities in the Everglades agricultural area, then uh, the growers can burn away with otherwise minimal regulations or protections put in place. The sugar industry maintains that burning supports local jobs. Messam and his fellow advocates point to no burn green harvesting, which, in addition to keeping people employed in the fields, can turn the previously burned off leaves into biomass for making paper cups and plates. There are some things moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We just got to continue to educate, continue to advocate. We're not trying to take away jobs. No, we're actually talking about a win-win situation. Why not just go completely green harvest, use the leaves for mulch, use it for biofuel and biochar and other things to create more industry, which will be an added benefit to your bottom line. And it also will help this community with our unemployment rate, now giving them more consistent long-term jobs. But across generations in the glades, there are many who see the Stop the Burn campaign as a threat to local livelihoods. The sugar industry has been deliberately maligned by certain groups that have their own political agenda with the sugar industry. We're, we just happen to be caught in the middle. And a lot of people are successful in the glaze because of those burns, as some people would say. So it hadn't affected me or anybody in my family. And let's not underestimate the importance of agriculture in Palm Beach County. You need this. Because without agriculture, we don't have a lot of the amenities that you see here on the coast without the agriculture and the muck. I'm here with the Stop the Burn campaign, talking to people and letting them know about our campaign. And hopefully we can get more people engaged and active and want to know more so we can put more pressure on our leaders. We don't want no smoke. We don't want no sugar cane smoke. Do you guys have any kids who got like asthma? Yeah, I don't have, I have. 
Yeah. 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 Does it flare up when they start burning yeah. and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And I have asthma myself. You got asthma. I have asthma. We're not trying to shut them down. We just want them to be good neighbors. We'll love you guys and maybe stop by one Tuesday. We meet, okay. we got different events that we try to inform the community. I definitely will stop by. In addition to community outreach, the Stop the Burn campaign has continued to share their message with local leaders, hoping to inspire change and to advocate the alternative benefits of green harvesting. Think of it having a neighbor next to you who comes over to your property line and dumps over trash in your yard and then expects for you to pay for it out of your own dime. Well, that is what the Glaze community has been experienced with this archaic practice of pre-harvest burning. And we're asking that the sugar industry be better neighbors by stopping the burning and going green harvest. One of the things we do to try to inform the community as well as our local and political leaders is we hold press conferences to talk about our campaign and to really kind of put a little bit more pressure on our leaders to take a stand and either choose a side as far as, you know, what do you think our community needs that's going to help our community better? We are confident that the more people know about this issue, that uh, the more pressure there'll be on the industry to do the right thing. Talk about our, our recent data that we have about green harvesting in other countries and even the state of Louisiana that's practicing this practice now is creating more jobs. And why not us? Now, why not we can't um, pressure the sugar industry to become better neighbors for us? Many countries like Brazil and Australia, who used to burn, now green harvest and find it more profitable. Where green harvesting is carried out, not only is the sugar cane not burnt, but the trash is utilized as a soil strengthening mulch, in addition to also being utilized to create electricity and various biofuels and other products as well. This is definitely something that we've been trying to spread awareness about. People need to come to the table and talk about how we need to do this because we got causes on both sides. Well, I don't want to get sick from all the smoke and say, well, it's cheaper and easier for us to burn. I don't know. We can change what some people may consider as trash and turn it to treasure. By using green harvesting, our kids don't have to deal with the black snow and the respiratory issues. By using green harvesting, creating more jobs, and we have a better quality life here in the month.